the last topic I'd like to speak to you about today, Dave, is uh, another one of your biggies, a lot, um, one of the bits that I, I know you spend a lot of time working on, and that's performing under pressure. And this, again, you, you can see the obvious applications with elite athletes and high-performance um, sports people. But what I'm really interested in is finding out what, how your work can apply to a marathon runner who's looking at, say, sub-five for, for the marathon. Yeah. Well, I think the easiest thing to start off with is to say, well, okay, so what is performing under pressure? And there's a very glib statement that just says, well, when the pressure's on, we can still perform. But actually, the reason people are able to perform under pressure is because they get immersed in the process rather than the outcome. So if, you, let's say, you want to get under uh, five hours for a marathon, okay, which is, which is still shifting, Right? And you're, and you're not uh, a, a club runner. You're not an international runner, but you're somebody, a running enthusiast that wants to get back into it. Well, start off, okay, by piecemealing your training. So you start to create the expectation that you are, first of all, are able to do it. So, for example, it, it, um, you know, what's your um, pace over 10 miles? What's your runs over 15 miles? And so on. And then start doing those splits. But more importantly is when you're doing these time splits, think through processes of what running is. Now, running is striking the ground, not too hard down, but rolling through and pushing back. Now, to make that a little bit easier, you could argue, well, okay, I need to be a little more upright to make sure that I'm striking and pushing something that's actually quite solid. I, I don't want a floppy upper body, otherwise I'm tipping all over the place. And then the other part of it may be, well, I don't want any tension in my shoulders, so I need my fingers to be loose. I need my little fingers in particular to almost be flopping off the end of the joint, so there's no tension in my shoulders. Now, all of these are little processes, and if focusing on these are almost having a circuit of saying, okay, right, I'm going to focus on my legs now for the next 10 lampposts, for example. Then I'm going to focus on my torso, my pillar, for the next 10 lampposts. And then I'm going to focus on my arms for the next 10 lampposts, or, or whatever it is. Now, that, you will be surprised how you get lost in it. And the, intr the, the uh, pressure of, I have to perform at a certain pace, which is the outcome, tends to go in the background because you're focusing much more efficiently on the process. And once you do that, you'll find, I know it sounds a bit glib, but you'll find the outcome is more likely to look after itself, providing you you start timing that, and you start getting a feel. And I'm sure most runners can pretty well guesstimate the time once they start running at a regular pace, even if it's running in the gym on a, on a running machine where the time is set. You say, okay, right, I'm going to have a go. I'm going to run for an hour and just see how far I go, look at the pace, et cetera, et cetera. And even during that, start to experiment with, I'm doing – Let's just say, for the sake of argument, I'm doing uh, 10K an hour. All right? That's my pace. So it's, it's on 10. How can I get myself to start running on 10K and then start making it to feel easier? And all of those things, the three things that I've just, would be keys that get you immersed in the process. So you'd probably be tempted to put it up to 10.5 or 11. But resist that temptation and try and think of the pace that you need. Because don't forget, for a marathon, it's going to be a lot longer than just the one hour. So it's going along those lines of finding processes that help you run more efficiently, okay, so that you can start getting those split times. Then when you come to the big day, it's a question of, do you know what? When I start, I've got my rotation of three or four concepts Okay, and, and if you've got a, a, a watch that you're going to watch on, which it just gives you the time of it, for the first uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to focus on this. The next 15 minutes, I'm going to focus on this, and so on. And you will be surprised how the time starts to go, and you become more efficient 
particularly when fatigue kicks in and you're under pressure to break that time that you've set yourself. I think that's really interesting and, and quite, quite even more so than the fact that it's something that's so simple to do. Um, it's so simple to you know, just tell yourself that for the first 10, 15 minutes you're going to be concentrating on keeping your head up and that your breathing's regulated and then the next block or the next uh, two or three kilometers you're going to be uh, thinking about, as you say, keeping a torso upright and, and looking about how your feet are going to be striking the ground. We can all do that, but it's about having the awareness about it in the first place. So um, really usable advice there. It's fantastic. And, and, and the other thing is, is, is don't be shy to share it with your training buddy. You know, well, whilst you're running, would you say? Or? Absolutely. Just say, okay, look, what are we going to do? For, you know, so you've trained with your mate. You, you, this is a big day. The London Marathon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I'm assuming that there are uh, kilometers or mile markers along. And you say, okay, right. So our strategy is rotation of these three things each mile. And you help each other. And you say, right, yeah. okay, don't forget it's torso now. Great. And then you're running along, and they said, don't forget, here we go, right, now we're changing to foot strike, and so on. So, you know, and, and you know what? You'd be surprised. The very, very elite performers that I've worked with, the, the biggest single commonality of all of them under pressure is they give themselves instructional-based process keys to work on, and it's their ability to be immersed in the process under pressure, which enables them to perform as well as they do. What do you say, Dave, just to finish off, that the pressure, um, when we talk about performing under pressure, the pressure is just, it's almost a figment of our own imagination, our own um, creation. And, Absolutely. And it's just a case of identifying the source of that, that pressure, not, not quite eliminating it, but as you said, just moving away from, from that, which is always outcome-based. And just going back to the basics and thinking, well, how do I, how do I perform? What do I need to do? And uh, going back to the, your technique again. Yes. Uh, the, the, thing that, the one thing you did say is that you, you, you don't quite forget about it. it. It's very, very interesting. There are quite a few people who say, well, you know, forget it's the London Marathon. You know. Well, how can you forget it's the London <laughs> Marathon? You know, there are 12,000 people there. You're in Hyde Park. It's the most incredible, energizing experience. And somebody says to you, well, Forget about you're in the London Marathon. Just take it as a training run. There is no way you can do that. So it's not about forgetting. What it's about is displacing those thoughts of awe and, wow, look at this, with some instructional base keys like my fingers or something like that, which is actually quite difficult to concentrate on. That's why the little finger is better than just relax the shoulders. That's why the foot strike, does it go heel toe? Do you push? Can you feel it off your toe? The little minutiae, those are the things that you get lost in. And that's the key. In other words, give yourself thoughts that displace the thoughts of this is the London Marathon. Okay? You can't ignore it. It's like telling somebody to say, right, whatever happens, I don't want you to think about a green elephant. And the irony of it is you've got to remember what to forget so you can't do it. <laughs> yeah. The key thing is to displace and to find things that help your running processes to displace those immediate thoughts of awe and occasion. Dave, that's brilliant advice and very usable as well. I think that's uh, certainly the, 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 the conversations we've had in the past. That's one of the things I've enjoyed most about um, from talking to you is just how easy it is to apply these concepts to anybody's running, even though obviously you work with a lot of the high performance end of, um, of the, the spectrum. Um, this is stuff that anybody can, can apply, whether you're looking for a sub three hour marathon or for a sub six hour marathon, it really doesn't matter. It's just going back to the basics and looking at it from this perspective makes a huge difference. So thanks very much for your time today. And um, is there a, uh, do, you, do you have a website where people can find out a bit more information about yourself? Uh, yes, just, uh, there's either performing under pressure, or just DaveAllred.com is one or two things on there that, m that might help them out or give them an opportunity to take it further. Okay, Dave. Well, I'll, again, make sure I've got both of those links up on the site. And uh, thanks again for joining us today. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you.